Waking Up the Neighbors Waking Up the Neighbors is the sixth studio album by Canadian singer-songwriter Brian Adams, released on September 24, 1991. The album was recorded at Battery Studios in London and at the Warehouse Studio in Vancouver, mixed at Mayfair Studios in London, and mastered by Bob Ludwig at Masterdisc in New York City. The album reached the number one position on the album charts in at least eight countries. Its first single, Everything I Do I Do It For You, was number one on the UK singles chart for a record 16 consecutive weeks. The album was also notable in Canada for creating controversy concerning the system of Canadian content. Music Background and Recording The performance of Adam's 1987 album Into the Fire was felt as somewhat of a disappointment. Although it reached no. 7 on the Billboard album chart and no. 2 in his native Canada, it fell short of the massive commercial success enjoyed by his fourth album Reckless released in 1984. Into the Fire was also Adam's last album recorded together with his longtime collaborator Jim Valance. Their songwriting partnership ended in August 1989. For the new album, Adams joined forces with Robert John Mutt Lange, previously known for his work with AC Slash DC, The Cars Foreigner, and Def Leppard. The album was recorded at Battery Studios in England and the Warehouse Studios in Canada. Recording began in March 1990 and, along with mixing, finished in June 1991. According to Adams, Lange changed his way of thinking about the songwriting process, making him work meticulously on each song. As a result, the recording process went on for more than a year, and the release of album, originally scheduled for the fall of 1990, had to be postponed several times. Lange is credited on all 15 tracks of the album, including four songs whose demos were originally recorded with Valance. Songs Everything I Do I Do It For You was the most successful single off the album and has become one of the most successful songs of all time, having spent seven weeks at number one in the United States Billboard Hot 116 consecutive weeks at number one on the UK Singles Chart, 11 weeks on the Dutch Top 40 and nine weeks at number one on the Canadian Singles. The song won a Grammy Award for Best Song Written Specifically for a Motion Picture or Television at the 1992 Grammy Awards, and was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Song of 1991. The song came about when Adams was approached to write something by the producers of the then, upcoming Kevin Costner film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and was asked to work on a theme song. He was provided a tape of orchestration written by the composer of the film score, Michael came in. With this, he and Lange used a section of Michael's orchestration and created Everything I Do I Do It For You, which was then placed deep into the closing credits of the film when it opened on June 14, 1991. The song went to number one in the United Kingdom the week before the film's British release and went on to top the charts in 16 countries and sold over 10 million copies worldwide becoming one of the biggest selling singles of all time. The song was nominated for an Academy Award but lost to Beauty and the Beast from the eponymous film. It won a Grammy Award for Best Song from a Motion Picture. Years later, when the BBC asked Brian about the recent acoustic live version from his Bare Bones CD, Do you ever get bored of hearing your record-breaking hit Everything I Do? Brian said, Ian said, Of course not. What a silly question. Julian Temple directed the music video for Everything I Do, I Do It For You. It was shot in Sheffield, England over May 17, 18, 1991. Can't Stop This Thing We Started was the second single from the album. A rock song in contrast to Everything I Do, I Do It For You, it peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 behind Prince's Cream. Can't Stop This Thing We Started received two nominations at the Grammy Awards of 1992 for Best Rock Song and Best Rock Performance Solo, winning none. There Will Never Be Another Tonight was the third single from the album. The title came from a fragment Brian Adams and Jim Valance wrote in late 1980s. Originally titled Buddy Holly Idea, 
because of its resemblance to Buddy Holly's song Peggy Sue. It was developed into a song by Lange and Adams. Thought I'd Died and Gone to Heaven was the fourth single released from Waking Up the Neighbors. Written by Lange and Adams, the song was the first song written for the album. Thought I'd Died and Gone to Heaven reached number 13 on the Billboard, Hot 114 on the mainstream rock tracks. In the UK, it reached number 8. All I Want Is You, Do I Have to Say the Words, number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 and Touch the Hand, were also released as singles but didn't get the heavy rotation as the first four singles released. Release and Reception Waking Up the Neighbors was released after a number of delays in September 1991. The album peaked at number 6 on the Billboard 200. The album was released in September and album, and single topped the charts in many countries with Everything I Do I Do It For You spending record-breaking 16 weeks at number 1 on UK singles chart and topped the charts in say. It also made record-breaking sales of 4 million copies in the US. Canadian content regulations were revised in 1991 to allow radio stations to credit airplay of this album towards their legal requirements to play Canadian music. The album has become Adams' second best-selling album worldwide. Adams won a Grammy Award in 1992 for Best Song Written Specifically for a Motion Picture or Television for Everything I Do, I Do It For You. Waking Up the Neighbors included other hit singles including Can't Stop This Thing We Started, There Will Never Be Another Tonight, Thought I'd Died and Gone to Heaven, All I Want Is You, Do I Have to Say the Words, and Touch the Hand, and all had accompanying music videos. All of these songs, including Do I Have to Say the Words, placed on the Billboard Hot 100. Everything I Do I Do It For You arguably became Adam's most recognizable and popular song. Its music video received heavy airplay on music television. Canadian Content Controversy The album caused controversy in Canada concerning the system of Canadian content. Although Adams was one of Canada's biggest recording stars at the time, the specific nature of his collaboration with non-Canadians, coupled with his decision to primarily record the album outside Canada, meant that the album and all its songs were not considered Canadian content for purposes of Canadian radio airplay. Under the system then in place, a piece of recorded music had to meet any two of the following four criteria in order to qualify as Canadian content. One, the artist was Canadian. Two, the track was completely recorded in Canada. Three, the music was entirely written by a Canadian or Canadians. Four, the lyrics were entirely written by a Canadian or Canadians as Adams co-wrote both the music and the lyrics with Mutt Lange, who was from Zambia, and he did not primarily record the album in Canada. He only fulfilled one of the criteria. It was noted that if Adams had written all the lyrics and Lange all the music or vice versa, the collaboration would have counted as Canadian content. As a result, under CRTC regulations, none of the album's songs were considered Canadian content. In protest, Adams briefly threatened to boycott Canada's annual Juno Awards, where his album had been almost completely ignored by the awards committee. He did end up winning the Entertainer of the Year Award voted on by the Public and Producer of the Year Award. Adams publicly criticized the CRTC policy, calling it a disgrace, a shame, stupidity. He continued his attack with, You'd never hear Elton John being declared un-British. As a result of the controversy, in September of that year, the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission announced that Canadian content rules would be changed. The new regulation allows non-Canadians to contribute up to 50% of the finished content to each of both the music and the lyrics of a recorded piece and still qualify for Canadian content status provided the recording artist is Canadian or the song is recorded in Canada. Accordingly, the Adams slash Lange songs and the Adams slash Lange slash Valance songs on the album now count as Canadian content, as Jim Valance is also Canadian. However, the Adams slash Lange slash came in co written Everything I Do I Do It for You Still does not count as Canadian content, 
as two of the three writers are non-Canadians, and the track was not recorded in Canada. Waking Up the Nation Tour Before releasing the album, Adams had already started a tour promoting it, and on June 8, 1991, he held large concerts in Europe co-headlining with CZ Top. Shortly after the tour started, Everything I Do I Do It For You was released as the debut single for the album. The single became a worldwide hit. Adams further supported the new album with his tour Waking Up the World, which started in October 1991 and ran through May 1993. On October 4, 1991, the world tour started in Belfast, Northern Ireland. On December 18, 1991, Adams played his two first ever shows in Reykjavik, Iceland. After his tour in Europe, as well as a concert at Wembley Stadium attended by more than 72,000 people, Adams left for the United States, where he performed at the Ritz Theater on January 10. That concert sold out in less than 20 minutes. In attendance were Ben E. King and Nana Hendricks. The Canadian leg of the Waking Up the World tour kicked off in Sydney, Nova Scotia on 12 January 1992, and wrapped up with a standing room only concert in Vancouver, British Columbia, on 31 January. In February 1992, he toured New Zealand and Australia for seven dates, kicking off with a press conference in Sydney. On February 21, the tour headed to Japan for close to a dozen shows in six cities. Brian taped an interview with Much Music's Terry Dave Mulligan in Calgary, Alberta, and the air date was scheduled for mid-March. The tour continued through several European countries in June 1992, including Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, and Scandinavia, and in July 1992, Brian performed for the first time in Hungary and Turkey. September through December 1992 saw the tour in the U.S. The Asian tour headed to Thailand, Singapore, Japan, and Hong Kong in February 1993, before returning to the U.S. during March through May. Adam's visit to South Africa during his Waking Up the World tour, following the release of Nelson Mandela and other political prisoners from prison, and the unbanning of black political parties, has been left relatively undocumented. Adam's concert at Cape Town's Greenpoint Stadium during the tour was called one of his most emotional and memorable performances. Coca-Cola was one of the official partners and sponsors of the tour, and the beverage company released a commercial promoting the tour. It featured the songhouse arrest with Adams and his band playing the song in a neighborhood and also featured actress Neve Campbell. Track Listing all tracks written and produced by Brian Adams and Robert Lange, except where noted. Personnel, personnel. Brian Adams vocals, rhythm guitars, guitars, Robbie King Hammond organ, Tommy Mandel organ, Phil Nicholas keyboards, programming, 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 boards, programming, Bill Payne acoustic piano, Hammond organ. Ed Schumer keyboards, Keith Scott lead guitars, Larry Klain bass, Dave Taylor bass, Mickey Curry drums, the Tuck Back Twins Brian Adams and Mutt Lange backing vocals, production, Brian Adams producer, Robert John Mutt Lange producer, Nigel Green recording, Ken Loma's additional recording, Yan Memi assistant engineer, Ron Obvious Technical Engineer, Bob Clear Mountain Mixing, Avril McIntosh Mix Assistant, Bob Ludwig Mastering, Richard Frankel Package Design, Andrew Catlin Design Concept, Photography, Bruce Allen Management, Charts, Certifications and Sales, <laughs>